racing, 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 the sport of kings, and indeed today, the sport of queens. The thunder of hoofs, the shouts of the crowd, as horse and rider straining every nerve in the electrifying dash to the winning post. Thrill upon thrill. Well, that's racing. Newmarket, that busy little town on the Suffolk border, famed throughout the world as the metropolis of racing. In the center of its high street is the headquarters of the Jockey Club, the ruling body of everything connected with turf matters. At the top of the high street is the ancient Rutland Arms Hotel, still with its cobble courtyard, once a favorite rendezvous of gay King Charles II. Later, the king built a palace near, and there's a tunnel beneath the narrow road, from here to there. Why? Well, that's none of our business. At the other end of the high street, almost on the July course, is a small cemetery where lies buried one of the most famous jockeys of all time, Fred Archer. His health undermined by continual wasting and the grief at losing his beloved wife, Archer took his life with a pistol shot. Across the road is the famous July course where the Cambridge and Cesarevich are run. Dead heat. Almost incredible that two horses should reach the post with not a whisker between them. Here's Acropolis in the black and white colors of Alice Lady Derby, with champion jockey Doug Smith riding. Acropolis ran the Rolly Mile in one second outside the record, beating his solitary opponent out of sight. How many of the hundreds leaving the meeting realize they are almost passing over the grave of the great Fred Archer? Hmm, we wonder. One of the most famous training establishments in Newmarket is Freeman's Lodge, presided over by Captain Boyd Rochford, who trains for Her Majesty the Queen. Harry Carr is first jockey and has ridden many winners in the Royal Colours. The first three horses following the head lad are Opera Score, High Belt and Alexander, all the property of Her Majesty. And here is Captain Boyd Rochford himself, who was responsible for putting the Queen at the head of winning owners last year. Lord Rosebery, for many years a pillar of the turf, visits his trainer Jack Jarvis at Park Lodge. Lord Rosebery is presenting the whip to his jockey Billy Rickaby. It was carried by Jack Watts when winning the derby on Ladass in 1895. The horse was owned by Lord Rosebery's father. And here are the actual colors and saddle carried in that memorable race. Among the many big winners trained by Jarvis for Lord Rosebery was the 1955 Chester Gold Cup winner, Prescription. A notable triumph for the present Earl was that of Blue Peter in the 1939 derby. Another important stable is Abingdon Place, whose master is Harry Red, once in the forefront as leading jockey. He has some fine animals in his charge. Mighty Mo, for instance, purchased by Mrs. Dewar for 16,500 guineas. And here is Immortal, several times a winner. Mars also is sure to make a name for himself and many others. In Harry Rag's jockey days, he was known as the head waiter because of the frequency of his wins when coming from behind. We asked him to demonstrate what this means, and here he is doing it. Here he comes, waiting his chance, and then full steam ahead. Oh, easy, isn't it? Yes, for Harry Red. 
When asked to name the best horse in his stable, without hesitation he said, Darius. Darius, of course, is a classic winner, having won the 2,000 guineas. The world-famous training grounds at Newmarket are worth going a long way to see. Every morning, wet or fine, hundreds of these thoroughbreds are exercised walking, cantering or galloping, and you may wonder at their value. Well, just a million or so. At Falmouth Cottage on the Berry Road lives Doug Smith, our present champion jockey. Doug's quite a family man, having two lovely children, Wendy and Michael. Incidentally, Mrs. Smith is the sister of that great cross-country horseman, Fred Winter. Wendy wants to know why girls can't be jockeys, but Michael's ambition is to emulate Jeff Duke. Present-day jockeys have all started the hard way, just stable lads, but they don't all reach the top as our Doug has done. Nevertheless, success or failure, they love the life, and if fortune has passed them by, well, there's still a good horse to be looked after. Also a great breeding center. The lovely Beach House Stud, owned by Mr. Martin Benson, is an example. It was Mr. Benson who purchased that great horse, Niarco, now chief stallion at Beach House, for 60,000 guineas. Here are some of his sons and daughters, and no doubt one or two of them may be carrying a bob or so of your money when they start racing. This mare is blind. Despite all the best veterinary skill possible, her sight could not be saved. So, a bell has been fitted to the pearl's halter to enable the mother to follow her offspring. This young rascal is just 24 hours old, and it's his first day out. Note the magnificent action of the racehorse in embryo as he feels the turf under his feet for the first time. Soon these youngsters have to be taught their business. And like naughty children, they don't altogether like it. Not a little bit, as you'll see. After a while, however, with painstaking attention from the trainer, they become more and more tractable. Having learned what the bit is for, they gallop with companions and their racing career has begun.
Now over to Epsom, that famous little town at the foot of the Surrey Downs. Once again, there's evidence of Charles II's love of racing. Everyone knows that the most famous race in the world is run at Epsom each year. There are many training quarters scattered around the Downs. Possibly the best known is South Hatch, where a Nightingale has trained for over 200 years. The present master is Walter Nightingale, who ably assisted by his sister Marjorie, takes care of more than 60 horses, some of which are owned by Sir Winston Churchill. Walter trained that grand horse, Colonist II, to win several races for the great old man. Colonist is now at stud. Here's the famous Tattenham Corner, where many a derby has been won and lost. It's said that the great Steve Donahue used to come round this corner with one foot over the rails. Here's running water a grand handicapper. Next is Nakabara, a sure winner to come, and Marwari, both classic horses. Incidentally, Mrs. Nightingale is a niece of that ever-beloved comedian, Mari Lloyd. Still another ex-jockey turned trainer is Victor Smythe. Victor also has a fine string of horses and many victories to his credit. may have to travel very long distances to a meeting. Here are two being boxed for Doncaster. They are Poobah and Tiger Rag, complete with rations. Good luck to you both. Now let's take a look at Mr. Everyman. He wants to go racing, just like you or me. But this costs money. Well, Mr. Optimistic visits a nearby uncle who will oblige, provided, of course, you deposit the collateral. too well up to the moment. Never mind, there's still another race. broke and no return ticket. So it shanks his pony. There you are, my merry punters. 
and don't ever forget that return half. You've been warned, that's racing. <laughs> <laughs>